So I was going through my digital science magazine and I came across this one article that said top 10 math equations of all time. And I remember clicking it and scrolling down to the top equation and it said Euler's identity. And what Euler's identity is that e to the i pi plus 1 equals 0. And I remember looking at that and going, what? This doesn't make any sense. e, that's just the base of the natural logarithm. i, that's an imaginary number, it's the square root of negative 1. And pi is a ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. How is e, i, and pi connected? How, and how does this equal negative 1? So I made it my mission to understand this equation at an intuitive level, to make sense of what this is saying. So I want to share with you guys some of the things that I've learned while trying to understand it. Now, most of the proofs that I've seen, and in fact, every professor I've spoken to, every textbook I've looked at, proves Euler's formula and identity using what's called a uh, Taylor series or McLaren series. But I want to do something different. I want to, I want to prove it using uh, this method that doesn't require a big or uh, large knowledge of calculus. So to prove this equation, I'm going to start by drawing a unit circle in the complex plane. So I have my real axis and I have my imaginary axis and every point on the circle has some angle theta and has a modulus of 1. So every point can be represented by the equation z equals cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. And if I take the derivative of both sides with respect to theta, I get negative sine of theta plus i cosine of theta. It's not very obvious, but I can actually factor out an i from the right side and write it as i times i sine of theta plus cosine of theta, which is nothing but dz d, d theta is equal to i times z. Now, if I do a little bit of rearrangement and take the integral of both sides, I get ln of z is equal to i times theta. And notice I didn't have to put the absolute value symbol there because every point on the circle is defined in the ln function. So this can be rewritten as e to the i theta is equal to cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta, which is what's called Euler's formula, which is a powerful tool in mathematics that can be used in many fields like differential equations. Now in the case where I put in a pi, you see how I can get Euler's identity. So e to the i pi is equal to the cosine of pi is just negative 1 and sine of pi is 0. This can be rewritten as e to the i pi plus 1 equals 0, which is what's called Euler's identity. Now this, pro this proof still doesn't make sense much, much sense at an intuitive level, but at least you see how I've connected i and pi because I did draw a circle on a complex plane. But let's try to make sense of how e is connected to all of this. To make sense of how e is connected to all of this, I'll have to look at the definition of what it means to raise e to an exponent. So the e to the x is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus x over n to the nth power. In our case, x is equal to i times pi. So I'm going to replace i pi for x. And notice how this is just an imaginary number. So let's see what it means to raise an imaginary number to the nth power. Let's see what happens when you let n get bigger and bigger in our case. So this is what you get when n equals 1 and n equals 2. And as I let that go to infinity, you see it gets closer to negative 1. So to make sense of what it means to raise an imaginary number to, to the nth power, we have to use something called the Dumars formula. So let's say z is some imaginary number a plus bi. Dumars formula states that z to the nth power is equal to its modulus to the nth power times the cosine of n theta plus i times the sine of n theta. So in our case, we want to know 1 plus pi over n to the nth power. So if I replace, uh, if I write this Dumars formula in terms of um, 1 and pi, pi over n, I get 1 plus pi over n squared to the n over 2 power, and I get this whole equation right here. So we want to know uh, what happens when n goes to infinity. So if you notice, for the sake of time, I will not prove this, but that goes to 1, this goes to pi, and this can be found using L'Hopital's rule. If you just plug in a really big number for n, you see you get something that's really close to 3.14. And this also goes to pi. So what we're left with is 1 times the cosine of pi times i sine of pi. The cosine of pi is just negative 1, and that's 0. So we're ultimately left with this. So after viewing this video, it should come as no surprise to you guys why this equation would be the top equation on that list. And then, as you can see, it connects the five biggest constants in mathematics. You have your e, i, pi, 1, and 0, all connected in such a simple and elegant manner. And you also have your big operators like your addition, multiplication, and exponents. So to quote Sal Khan from Khan Academy, if you are not blown away by this, you have no emotion. Hopefully I was able to clear up some of the mystery that lies in the beauty of this equation. Thank you guys for watching.